Hey, and good afternoon. I'm Angela Brown, and I'm here with Imogen Lamport, who is a, an international image consultant, and she's here today to uncover some really interesting observations about the clothes that we have in our closets. Please help me welcome Imogen Lamport. Thanks so much for having me, Angela. What if I purchased a whole bunch of things that <clears throat> I go inside the department stores, and not only do they not sell an exact replica of this now, they don't sell anything like that at all. And I've been holding on to stuff for 10, 15, 20 years. What do we do now as far as getting rid of some of that stuff? Because maybe we paid a whole lot of money for it. And do we hang on to it till it comes back in style or what? What happens next? The thing is, most things don't come back quite the way they were the first time around. And you'll even notice with, say, fabrics, I look back of synthetics from the 70s and 80s are very different from the synthetics of today. So I've been hanging onto my clothes for a long, long time. I look at what my daughter's wearing and like it's very 80s trend at the moment. And that's what I was wearing at her age. So she's late teenage years, the same age. I was wearing, it was all 80s at the time. Oh God, it's all 80s, is back again. But it's different fabrics. There's still variations to it. And also too is I wouldn't wear those things that she's wearing now because it would look a bit ridiculous on me because I am not that young anymore. So there's a few questions you can ask yourself about those clothes because often we're just told if you haven't worn it in a year, get rid of it. And I think that is not the right thing because there's a lot of reasons why we may not have worn it in the last year. Weather alone is one of those things. Like I'm in the middle of summer here. Now, some summers we get a lot of over 40 degrees, which means you need really lightweight clothing. And this year, summer's been all 25 to 30. So I haven't needed some of those things. So it doesn't mean that I should get rid of something because I haven't needed this season because the climate hasn't been right. Because next season, I might have that sort of summer. So you want to look at those, does it suit your current lifestyle? So a lot of the time we keep things because they're expensive. So we've invested a lot of money in them and we keep things because they're expensive. Yet we no longer have the lifestyle. Maybe it's all the suits we used to wear to work. So many companies now that there's few that need suits all the time uh -huh. but we've kept all these suits but are we wearing them no so it's often look at your lifestyle have you still got the lifestyle I always remember a client of mine telling me that she used to be married and she'd gotten divorced and she came to see me and she said it took me two years of shopping and buying ball gowns because her ex-husband used to be a CEO of a company and they went to a lot of formal events. So she said, I always used to need ball gowns. And she mm -hmm. said, it took me two years of being divorced and not going to one ball before I realised I did not need them anymore. So this is mm -hmm. why like reassess your lifestyle. Is it still relevant to my current life? And what I can foresee my future life being, like as in the next short distance. Because remember, if fashions only last two to five years, Mm -hmm. We don't want to be buying things that might one day work in 10 years time when our imaginary lifestyle happens. And another thing to tag on to what Jane just said was when I was inside some people's homes, I would see things like 15 really heavy down coats. Yeah. And I live in North Carolina and North Carolina has winter times, but the winter times are a couple of cold days where you might wear a, a thin jacket. Yeah. You're not going to wear a great big, heavy, puffy coat with the ear muffs and the moon boots and all that stuff that you would wear in Michigan that she moved from. Yes. And so she had lived here for a couple of years before she realized that it doesn't snow here, maybe at all. Yeah. You might have one day where there's a light dusting of snow and by nine o'clock in the morning, it's gone, right? Yeah. It's not five feet of snow that lasts all winter long. Yeah. And so the the style of life that you're living has a huge role to play in the types of clothing that you have. And the activities that you have, if you don't spend all winter out, outside in the snow, you're not going to need all the boots and the gloves yeah. and the scarves and the hats and the thick, heavy coats and all that stuff as well. So I think looking at and assessing your lifestyle is a huge element in maybe it's not where I am in my life right now, or maybe I've moved and I've relocated and I just don't need this stuff anymore. That's Absolutely. an excellent yeah. point. Yeah, so lifestyle is so important. Now, you may go back and visit your family in Michigan or something and you need to have a coat for if you do that, but you don't need 15. So it's no. then, and, and I often say when we have multiples of the same thing, we'll have the first best, like our favourite one, and then we have the second best, which we might wear sometimes, and then we'll have the third and the fourth. And, the, and I go, do you want to be third best or second? Like I was going like mm. most of us go for, there's one we really like and then there's the others, and then there's ones we just constantly pass over and it can be an evening wear because every category of clothes we're doing this where 
we've got the one we loved and then we might have bought a, like a repeat thinking well this was so great I'm going to buy another one but it's not quite the same and we don't end up wearing it the same and this is why you shouldn't go and buy things in just because you loved it in one color doesn't mean you need it in every color because there will usually be one that's first best and second best and then by the time you get to which is fine to have the second best because maybe when first best is in the wash you get second best but we don't want to be third or fourth or fifth best do we like that doesn't make us feel good so I always say you want to think about that if you're always bypassing some clothes like that are similar to other things you have in a wardrobe, let those ones go because there's something about them that you don't know. Now, I like with my clients to figure out why we don't like them because the more we know about these preferences, this is our criteria. If we can create our own personalized guidelines and criteria, we stop making the mistakes. We don't bring the things home. And that's really important because research shows that once you own something, in fact, once you touch something, it has more value to it than before you touched it. Once you own it, so once you've got it into your house, it's much harder to get rid of than if you hadn't bought it in. So at the recruitment phase, so when you're in the store before you buy, you want to have a really great set of criteria so that you don't end up bringing the poor quality things home that you end up not wearing. And look, research also shows that most women waste half their budget that they spend on clothes each year on clothes they don't wear. So mm. you think about all that that we could be spending on something else, lifestyles and holidays and education. And there's so many different things we could spend it on or a few better clothes that we really love. Well, this has been so informative. And thank you guys so much for joining us. And we will see you again. Have a great week.